Today's video is brought to you by Sonoran Desert Institute. More on them here in a moment. You guys seem to like my last sciencey video, so we've got another one coming at you here today. This one is on cans. A lot of people go after a suppressor for their rifle to achieve some kind of sound reduction, usually to bring it down to the hearing safe level so they don't have to wear hearing protection. One of the added benefits of using a suppressor on your rifle is net recoil reduction. This is especially true when we're talking about what I'm going to term a thumper calibers, which is a caliber that uses a large diameter bullet in a straight walled cartridge for the purposes of hunting in a more restrictive hunting regulation state like the one I'm currently in. The state of Ohio requires us, for instance, to use either a primitive weapon or a shotgun or a straight walled cartridge rifle of 357 caliber or greater. This is led to the prevalence of things like 4570, 450 Bushmaster, and what we have here today is 350 Legend. And 350 Legend was designed specifically for the purposes of getting a little bit lower recoiling cartridge on the market here in the state of Ohio and other states like Iowa for the purposes of taking white-tailed deer. Do it. <laughs> the great thing about the Ruger American, and this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by Ruger, is that the rifles tend to be quite light. You can add optics and a can to them without giving yourself a super heavy rifle. If you go to various places across the internet, you will not find a consensus on what the root cause of the recoil reduction due to the suppressor is. Many people who haven't studied it will say something along the lines of, it has to do with the addition of the weight to the end of the system, and therefore a recoil reduction. While it does play a role, that is not the actual root cause of what the recoil reduction would be. And today that's what we're gonna be looking at. What we're going to do is take some measurements, suppressed versus unsuppressed, and show you that that is simply just not the case. For this, we're gonna be using 145 grain FMJ rounds. And here we go. Unsuppressed. Okay. There is our first measurement, unsuppressed. We are putting in only one round at a time because obviously the system's weight would change if we were depleting an ammunition magazine each time. And measurement two, in the pipe. Measurement two, replicate three. So what we have here is the Bowers 375, and we've talked about this can previously, but this is Bowers' smallest offering in what I'm going to call their dinosaur hunting line. Suppressed, number one. Unfortunately, my phone died, so we're going to have to switch out to the GoPro for taking the actual measurement video down here. It is what it is. I really wish that my phone would come back. Maybe we write it down. I think this one might hit the steel. Hit the steel. Now I'm just gonna take some quick velocity data to support the calculations I'm gonna do later. Five rounds. Okie dokie. So now that we've completed the empirical side of the testing with a non-statistically significant sample size based almost entirely on the premise that the average view duration is significantly less than what I would probably guesstimate is where I mentioned the parameters of the ammunition that we were using. Congratulations, you made it. You're cut above the rest. And now we're ready to do everyone's favorite part of the video, which is, wait for it, interweb math. Interweb math, 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 math. But before we do, if you would like to work in firearms for real and not just put on a contrived circus twice a week, who wrote these lines? <laughs> you should check out Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online school focusing on courses pertinent to firearms disciplines. For anyone looking to break into a career in the firearms industry 
or perhaps just expand their horizons in a given area. Their online program allows students to flexibly earn up to an Associates of Science degree in firearms technology and or an advanced gunsmithing certificate. Of particular interest to me were their advanced armor courses, specifically dealing in PCCs and AR-10s. Although they do offer an advanced 1911 armorers course for anyone who wants to work on antiques. SDI is nationally accredited by the Distance Education Accrediting Commission. I feel like this is way more productive than Broomball or Humanities at a Liberal Arts College. I really wish I knew about this. If you'd like to know more about their current offerings, you can catch up with them at sdi.edu. So first things first, there are lots of ways to figure this out. I picked the way with the fewest equations because, again, internet math, this is for YouTube video. If we look at our measurements from the range, we see that the suppressed system came in at roughly 72% travel of that of the unsuppressed system. And hopefully in this video, I'm gonna show you guys why that can't be just the increase in weight from adding the can. Remember that we're talking about the entire system, the gun, the optic, the can, and the sled. To help out, I found this nice calculator online that gives us some useful numbers for recoil velocity. Their numbers seem to be on par considering just taking the average velocity, as in the thing went this distance in this time, gives us roughly two feet per second just from looking at frames from the video. In reality, the instantaneous velocity from the impulse should be higher, and the velocity should even out to the average as friction takes its toll. We're gonna roll with their numbers because they came from a computer and not me. Starting with the unsuppressed system at three feet per second, we should have no appreciable forces acting on the system except friction from the table. I mean, you guys can do air resistance if you want to, but good luck. Using a few equations from high school physics, we're gonna go after the coefficient of friction, which should be between 0.5 and 0.8, looking at some of the charts I found across the internet. Also, we're gonna be working in the metric system and then back converting to imperial once we get our final answers because that's just how I choose to do it. And if you guys don't like it, you can do your own video. Being a huge Star Wars nerd, we're gonna call this one the Force Stop. I don't know what Common Core is calling it these days, but it's probably just as lame as the rest of their mathematics methods. And our math gives us a coefficient of friction of 0.68. So if we put that back in using the parameters for the suppress system and solving for the theoretical distance, accounting only for friction, we should get a distance of 2.2 inches of travel. That is, if there is no other significant force acting on the system. And that's off by roughly 20% from what we got from the range. Going back in for some more mathing, I get 24% more deceleration suppressed versus unsuppressed. To understand this mechanism, I want you guys to think about it like an air brake. These flight control surfaces, uh, known as air brakes, extend out and basically increase drag on the aircraft, slowing it down in flight. We also have airflow in a can. Both the air that is in front of the bullet and behind the bullet is being compressed and passed through this can. When it impacts the baffle surfaces, it cools it down, slows it down, and redirects it. It also imparts force on the actual structure of the can. This generates forward drag with respect to the direction of fire, essentially pulling the rifle forward as it is trying to explode into your shoulder. Through the whole thing, we came up with numbers that, depending on how you use your words, come out to approximately 20%, and that's good enough for me. If you found the video interesting or informative, or maybe even a little bit of both, pardon the host, sorry, <laughs> then please consider smashing all those buttons down below, like, share, subscribe, those things that everybody tells you to do at the end of the video. They really, really do help out and we appreciate you guys. I hope this video brings into balance some of the things that go on with suppressors. They aren't just for sound reduction. They do have some added benefits to them, especially in the area of recoil reduction. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys on another video here at the VSO Gun Channel.